Yes. So doing a finisher, um, that's something that I, I don't know if I should have taught. What the fuck? Coming. No, I'm trolling. I watched that dude run in there. Master Chef, get in the fire. Get in the fire. Hold on, I'm not killing him. Get in the fire. You're an idiot sandwich. I'm telling him to get in the fire. He's an idiot sandwich. Master Chef must burn. Damn good kill. They're not getting back up again. The bronze guide. Um, so we are bronze, as you can see, bronze four. What's gonna happen is in bronze, again, it doesn't matter what legend you play. You can literally play anything. This is bronze. It's gonna be the easiest of all of them. Um, it has a potential of being a little bit because of the Smurfs and stuff like that. I understand Smurfs are a pain. There's something that I wanna highlight early on, and this goes all the way up until platinum. So for all my gold players and things like that, I would say, yeah, I would say this can even be adopted by platinum for sure. But a lot of the times you have a long, you have like a decent journey to practice your positioning over kills. Because in these ranks, you can literally get to second place with zero KP and still gain points. So I think, I think in bronze, what I want to explain to people, the correct way of Apex is you don't always have to fight. You don't always have to get into these, these firefights. You can actually climb at a bronze, quite literally eating a cheeseburger, getting into zone. You can scan the beacon multiple times, run out of zone. You can run to the, to, to the zone and you can literally get silver just playing zone, which is a part of Apex. The goal is to win. You're not always going to get seven kills or seven KP. Say, uh, KP, by the way, stands for kill points. So you're not always going to get the seven, seven KP. You might get three or four. But if you win, you maximize these points that are just going to climb you out. Getting seven KP doesn't necessarily matter up until diamond anyway. Like if you get three KP in a win, you're still going to climb, but it's going to be like a decent amount of points that you missed out on versus like in bronze and silver. If you win with zero KP, you're getting like a hundred and something points anyway. Just Focus on rotations, focus on your gameplay, have fun with it. You don't have to you don't have to run at everything. You don't have to kill everything. If you're actually bronze and you really, really want to learn how to play the game, take it slow. It's bronze. Like this is your chance to learn. Cause as you go higher up, you're going to be quickly smacked in the face by people who are a little bit more experienced at the game who have already done these steps. What I'm gonna do is I'm probably gonna play Octane just because I don't want to worry about my HP. Um I swear I'm bronze. I don't know why it says silver, but whatever. So again, don't worry about your team composition. Doesn't necessarily matter. Hello, boys. I tend to talk. Um, if you want to IGL your team, you could do that as well. IGL stands for in-game leader. Telling your team what to do, where to go, how to go. Boom. So this right here, I'm going to just kind of show you, right? We have that thermal zone. I'm going to look behind me in my ship. One team drop. We got one team thermal, one team tree, one team staging. One team's going harvester. Let's land here. I love this part. Ha! Let's go over here. So I think. So I want to show something real quick. So you see that team? I'm gonna stretch. So now I'm gonna turn. Wait. So I noticed that team swerved off and they're landing. I think they're landing on each other. Oh, that was a Mirage clone. So. Paying attention and looking on where those trails are bringing them was also a good indication of like, oh, this place is actually free. So the, uh, I'm going to go over in bronze, like how you loot, right? So bronze looting pretty much goes over up until your predator rank one. Doesn't matter. When you're first looting, loot everything. Just keep pressing E. Doesn't matter. Make sure you have your fists out because if you have a gun out and you keep pressing E, this is going to happen right here. It's like you're pressing E, you're pressing E, and your gun's going to change. And that's really annoying when you have all your attachments. So what you're going to do is, is you're just going to keep pressing E with your fists out. And when you have your fists out, you be grabbing everything. It doesn't matter. And as you're moving, you could be like, oh, I don't want this. I want this. I don't want this. Um, I do have a backpack back guide as well on my YouTube. So if you guys follow my YouTube, I actually have a backpack guide that literally did not change at all. I loot the same way. There's, there's certain things that I look for uh, and attachments and guns. So we know there was one team thermal. Um, we immediately just looted, rotated up. Yeah, they're going to be down there looting. We don't have nothing to worry about. Now, a lot of the times what I would like to do too is I'll 
find, let's say I find like a hundred heavy and like a hundred energy, but I really, really, really want the heavy, I'll start to prioritize heavy. Or if I find an energy mag over a heavy and I'm like, ah, oh, maybe I'll just switch to, I'll just switch the energy. They're pushing towards you. We can just come back up. Unless you want to fight this. Do you want to fight this? Yeah, let's fight it. Okay, let's fight it. We've got 45 seconds. If you don't go robotic legs, he, he's uh he's close on the platform. I'm gonna pop a cell, just make sure that I'm healed up a little bit. So that caustic, he was already cracked and decided to push me. I know I'm coming. Yep, yep, yep. So we knew the third party was gonna happen. Let's see what they have. So looting will come with time. Uh, I gotta explain a little bit of that. It's gonna be a little difficult. But again, I'm gonna drop a lot of my nades because I wanna I wanna check what's inside this box. I wanna make sure I grab some heals. I wanna make sure I grab just some things. And I don't want the meds to stop me from looting. And what, what I mean by I don't want the meds to stop me from looting, I have so many nades and I have so many, or sorry, the nades stop me from looting. I have so many nades that when I click on the ammo that what I actually need, I won't be able to do it. So I drop the nades and I know they're here, which is good. So just to give like a quick little breakdown is when we push that team, that caustic, I had an, I knew that he was going to push me because I was low HP and I was basically, I was basically ready for him to push me. Which is why I, I gave that little ego peek. All right, so this team is up there. What I'm going to do is I'm basically going to take the zip line and I'm going to try to get a little aggressive with my jump pad. Actually, no, we're not. We're going to go up this hill a little bit. And this team is going to basically push towards us. And I'm now controlling the fight. So this is going to basically guarantee us that we can move forward now, right? Now, if we went here and we decided to push them, they're going to be on the fence line and we're not. They're going to have cover and we're not, right? We're just going to be putting this little thing. But instead, I dropped back. I dropped back a little bit and I was able to control the fight and make, make them fight us. Now, we have to be worried about the third party that could be potentially behind us. So that's like, that's why you keep looking behind you, just making sure. And what I would do if in case I get third party, I would throw a jump pad and we would go that way. Because we know that area is safe. I'm going to put a jump out here. Okay. So jump pad. Kill that person. That person shot me. That's just hitting your shots. Now, with the storm moving, literally one thing I, I want you guys not to worry about is this is going to be another lesson in bronze, okay? Another lesson in bronze is if that fight took forever, right? Let's say that, that fight took forever is things kind of got crazy, right? You're pretty low. I'm in the storm. Most people would freak out. What I want you to understand is this zone could be closed right here and you would be absolutely perfectly fine because right here is a crafting station. You have the ability to use uh, to craft med kits. Um, you have syringes, med kits, everything. You could go down there. You can craft uh, more med kits, craft four, craft six med kits, drop whatever you need to drop because you're better off. You know, you're better off alive than dead. So it doesn't matter if you have to sacrifice, you know, a grenade or 50, uh, 60 ammo or whatever. You're going to find it on the way in. So don't worry. You can survive up to a certain point. This is kind of like an overall. I know this is bronze and I'm explaining this in bronze or whatnot. Um, but it's kind of like an overall. So a lot of times when you're crafting as well, what you can do is you can toss a heat shield. The only problem with heat shielding is, I, I don't know if this is too advanced for bronze, is it, it could signal other people at higher ranks. Um, they could see that as like, a, oh, I hear a heat shield, let's go get them. Um, but in bronze, you could throw a heat shield, survive in it, you're safe, you can craft freely, um, especially for octane to get your HP back. I have to remember, I'm trying to, I'm trying to, Remember that this is bronze. Why do we pass boxes all the time? So the reason why I pass boxes all the time, right, is there is quite literally nothing in these boxes. They weren't glowing purple, right? These boxes weren't glowing purple. I One thing in bronze that you can do is once you have your loadout, you kind of look at what you have and you kind of like, you understand, I go, oh, what do I need, right? I need heavy ammo. Again, in bronze, what we're fixating on right now 
is simply we have three kills. What we can focus on now, which we could have got more. We could have we definitely got more kills. We could have had like six from those other squad. We just got to, you know, with the zone, right? Now, this zone is a little bit difficult because it's one of those things of like, which side do you play? Um, if you had a beacon character, you just scan beacon and you figure that out. But I'm not trying to just like pound on bronze. I'm tr trying to put like if I if I really wanted to, I can run down this whole lobby and just get all the kills, but that wouldn't teach you guys anything. I'm trying to play as if I'm an actual bronze player. What would I do if I wasn't, you know, if I wasn't that good, right? Like if I, if I was an actual, an actual bronze player, I would be playing the, the edge of the zone. Now, when zone's closing, my bad guys, I'm just talking about some stuff. So when zone's closing, like right here, right? Another, another good tip that you can have in bronze that you're going to carry with you forever is just checking your backside and making sure that you're good. Um, you know, you can always kind of like peep behind you and go, is there anyone trailing us? You know, there, there was a, there's boxes here. So I know somebody fought here. I know somebody could be close. Um, you know, you judge what they need. There is no light. There's no heavy. But by checking our backside, we now know that there's nobody really like on there. Now, somebody can absolutely 1000% live in the zone and push behind us. That's a possibility. Um, I'll get into when to medkit on, uh, higher in the, in the video, uh, in higher ranks when it's actually needed. But yeah, there's so much, there's so much that I want to cover right now. And I just feel like, I feel like I'm jumping to so many different parts because I'm so excited because like there's so many different things that I like, I feel like that I've learned that I can teach people. I just don't know if it's like, do I teach it in bronze? Do I teach it in silver? Do I teach it in gold? Like, I don't know when to teach it. Reloading. Down one. So moving up on the right side, using these blue bins as protection. So that way, if I case I peek, now I'm going to be using the rock Reloading. because I knew there was more than one, right? There's, it's, a, it's a team. He's got red armor. You can armor soft off of it. it. Right here, bud. Right here. Evil shield here. Level five. Fire. Grab my armor. Grab my armor. Grab my armor. Right here. Grab it. Grab it. Grab that. Yeah, nice. I got you, bud. Here, take this jump pad. Bounce backwards. And I'm gonna punch my teammate to safety. Come on, compadre, get up! Come on, come on, come on! That's a little bit more advanced. You wanna do that later? Putting the Phoenix kit to use. So two teams are fighting right now. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna. I'm gonna be a little aggressive here. And it worked out. Last squad. So there's five armor swaps right here. So I can choose to just like sit on top of these armors. I'm gonna throw two nades. I'm gonna move up. We now now have a, uh, a knock. We throw the nades. I cracked one on the right side. I got knocked, but uh, Mirage is one. Mirage is one HP. Use my shield. Use my shield, but nice job. They're all dead. What's up? So this next game, we're going to be focusing on Silver Rank. So Silver Rank is literally the same shit as Bronze, except people are a little bit better. Uh, they're a little bit better. They kind of have like a little bit more of an understanding of the game. What we're going to do is, is I'm going to teach you guys how to fly. Um, maximizing the distance of a flight is unbelievably important. Um, not only that, but just there's a key number that I always try to stick to. And that number is 138. And I'll explain what that means. So I want to go really far, right? So this is the prime example is let's say I want to go countdown. So I'm going to drop this countdown. So I'm going to go like here. I'm going to maximize out. Wait. Okay. So on my left, you see a 138, right? I'm leveled out, leveled out. I'm going to 130, 140, 142, 138. Boom, boom, boom. Leveled out, leveled out, leveled out. Drop right here. 140. Right? I'm going to oh, I'm gonna drop right here. Leveled out, leveled out, leveled out. Boom, right here. Leveled out, leveled out, leveled out. So you see what I mean? So that's basically how you maximize your flight. Fifty-two with one bullet. I am taking fire, friends. I am repairing 
myself. They're not getting up. Make sure you can keep the ladder left. Oh, nice. In silver, we got the flight down, right? Now, after our first team fight that we had, you know, we third partied, we made our decision making. That that fight, we were making sure that uh, that we were on, like we were we were we pinched that squad. Then we moved forward. Then we had a three v three fight. We waited for the third party. We looted. We got everything. Now we can take our time. We can craft. Again, it's all about positioning, decision making. Uh, the longer you're alive, especially in lower ranks, you can climb doing absolutely nothing. I right now can get 3kp. I can rat for the remainder of the game and not get another kill and just farm like 150 points or something. I can't stress enough how important it is to develop this habit of, of just staying alive. Farms you points early on. So again, as I told you, I'm just staying alive, I'm just enjoying eating a donut. And that's the that's the thing about it, uh, about Apex Legends is especially in these lower ranks. A lot of people are like, oh, I'm stuck in silver. Oh, I'm stuck in gold. You can climb purely on placement. It'll take a little while, but by choosing these smart fights, you climb. Reloading. Is she gonna press her Q? I'm gonna fly up in the air. So I'm not gonna get aggressive, right? Because I'm gonna use the angles that I have. See what my teammate just did? My teammate just went in. The maps I am taking fire, friends. I cracked him. I cracked him. One's on me. Reloading. So one's on me very close, but I'm not gonna jump off the bridge. I'm just gonna use what's in front of me. So I know one's close. Now I know he has gold. No, I one has a jump pad. One's got purple behind me over here. Blue. So I'm gonna try to get angles. I know I have a jump pad for escape. So I'm using this team right now to pinch this team that's in front of me. Do you see how we're basically working together? teammates try to get the kill here now there could be there could be a team that's um on their way over here so what i'm gonna do real quick is i'm going to walk up not walk up i'm gonna basically put a jump pad right here and i'm gonna take this high ground and by taking this high ground this is giving my me and my team a better position so you see right here So by taking this angle that I've taken, it's now pinching this team to the far right. You can follow me. We're good. So what we're going to do is because there's four squads left, two of them are fighting right now. We are one of them. So that's three. There's one more squad that's unaccounted for. We can probably very easily just wrap our way over. So we're just using uh, the back end of zone. Is we we know that there shouldn't be anyone behind us because of how many squads are alive. Two of them are fighting right now. One of them just got wiped. Um, we're gonna loot like just to find some extra heavy if we can. If we can't. It's whatever. So there was a team on top of the hill. It was a pathfinder. It was a team that was fighting. And my team's got the left side covered. So if there's anybody up here, my right side. They're going to pinch on the left side, so I know I'm safe to move up. We know the, the package hasn't been taken just yet. I'm going to go for this package. So we're going to grab this package. Probably an alternator. I'm convinced in, in bronze and silver, they don't give you guys weapons. I'm convinced. 
They don't give you guys a Kraber. They're like, you're not old enough. You must have this many hours. So again, that package sounds very juicy, but I'm not going to go ahead and grab it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to stick to my, um, I'm going to stick to what I know, right? We're going to play the house. It's probably better to play inside of the air in the higher tiers, but because there's three squads left, it doesn't matter, right? Remember what I told you is we're going to farm so many points of just positioning and, and, a lot of those fights that we did fight were fairly easy. It wasn't, you know, it wasn't anything where we were completely missing, missed out of position. That Pathfinder is goddamn legend. Stay alive, bud. We need to help our team member. Our team member is most likely going to go not down. Giving my shields a recharge. Somebody's right here underneath. Okay, that that was um I shouldn't have done that. That was fucked up. That's on me. That's not bronze. You can't do that. Don't do that. I mean, if you can do that, do that. But I didn't do that on purpose. My body took over. I blacked out. I'm here. I'm back now. I re I remember what I was doing. I forgot. I forgot the guide. I forgot for like a quick moment. I forgot. That's on me. So what do we learn? <laughs> just, wait. So what do we learn? I should have never jump padded away. Um, that is just something that I actually was three death boxes in front of me. I could have easily armor swapped and then played the head glitch and then been there for my team members rather than jump padding away. I actually technically made a mistake. If I stayed, armor swapped, used the PK, I actually could have done a lot more for my team um, in that scenario. But overall, it was it was still good. We covered flying. Flying is at 130 or 140. Drop down to 130. 140. Level out. Drop down to 130. Go to 140. So again, we're going to look at the dropship. I do see this one team potentially stretching. So I'm just going to wait a little bit longer. I'm going to look at my right side. My right side looks pretty open. I can go lava fissure. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to try to patiently wait here. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to land um, here because this place, to me, looks the most safe. So I'm going to stretch all the way to the back So because my, uh, my team is going to lose the front. So uh, another key thing uh, in gold is what you want to do in gold is is we've already maintained we've already done everything uh that we've learned in the bronze and silver is we paid attention to the drop ship uh when we landed we um we kind of looked around to see where people are dropping uh and now that we have that information we know that there's a lot of teams uh it looks like two teams to be honest landing um in uh, tree so there's about two three teams in tree so what we're gonna do is we're gonna loot up and immediately I'm gonna be like, you know what? We should probably go tree. Now, a quick explanation of my loot as well. See how I kept the P2020 with the blue mag and the ammo, but I kept still picking up heavy because I was waiting for a bigger heavy gun. If I found a really nice heavy gun, great. If I found a like a deck, if I found an R301, then I'm just gonna then I'm gonna switch, right? So I was waiting for which gun that I was going to get first. There's a lot of teams fighting. So if I look at the items I currently have, I have a flatline, I have a mastiff. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to craft my armor and then I'm going to try to, I'm going to tell my team, let's push a tree. Let's, uh, let's craft our armors and push a tree or craft whatever you need to craft. Tree is definitely still fighting. Yep. I'll be right there. So we look at the kill feed. We notice that now we're paying attention to the weapons. We start to know what weapons sound like. So right now I noticed that there was a vault and I noticed somebody got knocked down in the kill feed from a vault. I'm down to push this guy. more than one. The ball is pushing me. Okay. I'm going to immediately go for the res. You too. Now, there's another team. Could potentially come. Just kind of waiting. I'm gonna slow heal. I can't look out for my team, right? So we just kind of, I'm just basically listening for footsteps, waiting to see if anyone's gonna come in third party. Doesn't look like it. 
So we're good to move. Now we have 2kp on the board. Now this is our decision to... Oh, I, like, I really like this. So now when I look at a zone like this, where I can't exactly... It's not this definitive decision to be like, where do we go, right? Um, Since we have a Pathfinder, he went pretty far. I'm not going to ask him. But normally you would want him to scan the beacon so that way you know where to play next. But if I had a guess, right? Like I'm thinking about my zone. I think it's going to end somewhere in the top part or countdown. So it's, it's this right here. Has a potential. If I had to take a wild guess, I think it's began to be ending um, probably in survey camp, like right around this area, like here. Um, but that's just me trying to understand the zone as much as possible. I think I'm conflicting with myself that it could be countdown um, because I've seen this zone plenty of times to be countdown as well. I'm not entirely sure. 100%. We noticed that the crafters right there, and I'm going to look and harvester. Those pills aren't looted, which shows me that most likely somebody's not there, but somebody can easily rotate into harvester thinking the same thing. So as I walk up into this, I'm going to be just kind of not saying anything. I'm going to be like looking for footsteps. We are not alone. Somebody's here. Look over here. As soon as he goes for that last pill, just beam him. Hostile yep, close. wait for it, wait for it. Wait for him to go that last pill. Oh, he sees us. I'm gonna shut the door. If one peeks out, I can beam him. I cracked two of them. Two, and now he's going inside the bubble with the bubble fighting with the Gibraltar. Gibraltar's going to jump down. I'm going to jump down with him. So the reason I placed my gen in the corner, uh, so that way it just stops any nades. Um, I should have done that way sooner as a Watson player. Just kind of forgot I was playing Watson if I'm being very honest with you. But putting the trap inside the door stops their push. Now putting the traps in a spot where they can't reach them as well, if that was better, I would have, I would have definitely like... Yeah, they can't see it. And then what about here? Yeah, so it's good. So they can't they can't kill this fence, right? They either have to go into it or they have to change the direction. Um, so basically, you just kind of like position yourself correctly. Why you waste syringe in your time to heal only one HP? There are so many times in Apex Legends where you'll live with just a sliver of HP um, where every HP matters. And on top of that is because I'm done with fighting. I'm good with fighting. I just have to basically move forward now. I know for a fact I'm going to find syringes at some point, somewhere. So there's no point for me not to use a syringe for a little bit of HP when I know I'm going to find more syringes. Or I know I'm going to find more meds to, to, to heal that little bit of HP. But if I get into a team fight and I could have lived because I just, like, I, I survived that one bullet. There were so many times where in Apex Legends where you actually survive with one singular HP. It's insane. But if you don't have if you don't have meds and you're in like the end zone, it's kind of better off. Like if I was missing like that much shield, I'm not gonna waste a, a, a shield cell. So the rotation that we just took is we're playing the the like a wide angle. So that way anything behind us, there's no one there, right? Pills unlooted, crafter here, gonna scope in and make sure no one's across the bridge, no one's there, moving over. As a Watson player, what I could do too is I could pick up ultimate accelerants, uh, if I find them. They're fighting at the choke point. They're zipping on each other. They're fighting over here. Oh. Hey, we're, 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 we're in like two feet up right now. Like one went right, one went left. One, one left. I'm just going to peep it real quick. See who's there. They're full sending. They knocked one. So I'm walking up. Yo, Beth, you're, you're alone. Come with us. Reviving. Knock one, almost knock two. He's one HP. That's blood. What I'm gonna do real quick is I'm gonna put a shield gen behind here and I'm gonna use my syringe. I'm gonna use a medkit actually. That's gonna heal me. So I can pop this medkit. We know there's a full team behind, which means that we can't exactly push up. Okay, there's a team inside that tunnel. I'm going to pop a shield, though. So. I'm going to walk up. Okay. 
So that person uh, lived, so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna bother. There's no need to get a little aggressive, right? I'm gonna pop another shield cell. I'm gonna make sure I fully utilize this uh, Watson gen. So now what I'm gonna do? Let's uh, we can just walk back. We got one KP out of out of the uh, out of the thing we we know we did. Now you can just jump pad towards me if you want. We're coming back to you fast. So, what we did right there wasn't wasn't so bad. We had the fence line. We knew nobody's gonna be behind us. There's a lot of squads in front of us. We put the uh, the uh, the Watson Gen. We're pretty safe, right? So being able to poke, do a little bit of damage, potentially hinder some teams, um, is actually not a bad play to make. I have been down. Contact. So what I'm gonna do right now is this team's gonna get really aggressive. Go back up. Behind, behind, behind. Leave, 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 leave. I need a pad. Have a jump pad? No, I don't have. I'm gonna pop a battery. These two spots to fight, hopefully. We're, we're gonna wait patiently, wait for these two spots to fight. And we're gonna swing left. Slide all the way down left. Try to get inside that house, right there. No, no, don't take the balloon, you crazy fucking guy. Moby. That's why you carry a Moby! Now we have a mobile respawn, uh, getting my teammate back in, uh, it's pretty important. Seeing what you can take from the storm. We know that other building across from us isn't looted. So, there's two squads left. What we're gonna do is we're gonna just push forward on this side of the map. We're gonna try to take market. So this is called market right here. But being able to just loot this side of the map, uh, and, and, and see what we can grab for our, for our teammate. We have to go the, the, the Yeah, the other they're fighting. I'm down. Last two squads are fighting. Hostile spotted. Yep, let's get that high ground. We know that somebody got knocked on the enemy team. Oh, oh. Let's just, I'm gonna back up here. The base we do right here, we just chill. So I'm gonna place my gen pretty early. And the reason why I'm gonna place my gen pretty early is now I'm gonna set up fences. So basically right now, don't go too aggressive, dog. So right now, what I'm what I'm doing is I'm basically setting up a perimeter that allows us because they're gonna they're still gonna be up up uh, high ground and be in. They're gonna be in on high ground, but we're just saving meds. I'm making sure that my ult is gonna be um, still really good. You should not be up there, dog. Break two open. So we can't be too aggressive because that team is on our uh, our um. Come back to me, come back to me. There's a team over there. Oh no. So I get to save my ammo. Gonna use these rocks as cover. Just stopping up my shield. I Right here. I'm wide swing on him. Fire, gonna throw an arc star. Force yep. So using that arc star, I was gonna force him over. I know he has a red armor. We're gonna armor swap to the red. It's the last person. I'm gonna armor swap. I'm gonna, I'm gonna switch to the alternator. I'm gonna miss every single bullet, cause why not? You know what I mean? Haha! <laughs> GG's. I was like, I'm gonna miss every single shot! You see me? Look at me go! Nice! So, the decision making there was... I know that people are fighting on my right side, right? So, when he says, I cracked the seer, 
I basically wanted to see if I can punish that Seer. When I when I wide swung on the left, I realized that it was just a 1v1 between me and the Seer. And there was a lot of cover for me to move, right? There was a lot of cover for me to potentially, like, if I got in trouble, I could just slide back into the spot that I was in. So I kept the pressure up. I kept that Seer, like, pinned. So I threw an Arc Star. And if he stayed where he was, he would have got hit with the Arc Star. So he moved more to the right, which I was already preemptively aiming. Because if I throw the arc star to the left and you're standing on the left, the only direction you're going to go is right. So I'm going to watch the right. And when he popped up to the right, I beamed him for, you know, for 67. Now, the lifeline one clip, that's just something, again, that's just aim. You might not always one clip, but you are going to probably do like 80 to 110 damage right there on that peak. And that's really good because when you do all 80 to 110 damage, you slide up. And if you remember, all my fences are right next to her. So she only has a little bit of a little bit of space to go. So I was able to basically use my fences to be like, okay, she's only going to go in a straight line or over the fence. But like, regardless, she won't be able to, she doesn't have any time to heal if I keep this pressure up. So just to, to kind of wrap everything, uh, to wrap everything that we talked about in the silver and the gold, you pretty much, the, the bronze and the silver and the gold are very similar in what you do. Um, you know, you want to practice what gun loadouts you want. You want to practice positioning. Now, if you notice a lot of this uh, up until the end, it was more so I was more so focused on rotating and focusing on the zones and making sure that, you know, I'm rotating on the outskirts. So that way I didn't have to watch what was behind me. I only had to watch what was in front of me. And that's the thing that a lot of people don't do is they kind of just keep going and gunning and gunning and going and pushing and doing all that stuff. Um, but the thing is, is, like, from bronze all the way up until Predator, man, you're just making these these smart decisions and you're taking these smart fights. But overall, you keep the same foundation that I that I talked about from bronze all the way up. It's a lot of positioning. It's a lot of landing solo. Um, it's get your KP, get 2 to 3 KP early, and then just vibe. You know what I mean? You're going to get your KP. You're going to get your kills towards the end game. You don't always need to finish with 7 kills. You know, it's not always going to happen. And so many times in Predator rank, there's so many times where we make we make big mistakes because we're so focused on KP and we'll finish with like three, four, five KP, but what's a dub? You know, it's a, it's a win. It's, it's 180, it's 200, it's 160. Um, a lot of the times you see these professional players, we want content. We want to just send it on people and to kill them and to get 25 kills in a pred lobby and be like, uh, you know, but that's not how you climb. This is specifically based off of how do you climb? How do you get from being gold to, 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 to platinum, platinum to diamond, and diamond to masters, and eventually masters to predator. Slow and steady wins the grind. Yeah, you can literally climb from bronze to silver based off of positioning. You literally don't have to kill a single person. You can just survive, uh, and you'll get to get to silver. Almost the same thing with silver. Um, I think with silver, you can almost do the same thing. So...